Hey everyone, it's Jeannie here and welcome to my channel. So today I want to do a luxury tag video. Now I wasn't tagged by anyone but my friend Zen requested it and I thought it would be fun to share with you guys. Um, I don't have the biggest luxury collection, it's actually quite small because um, I do, I don't make a lot of money, I'm not rich or anything and I do have a mortgage so but I am proud to say that all of these I have saved up and bought myself. So yeah, let's just get into it. So the first question is, what was your first designer piece? And I interpreted that as what was the first thing I spent a lot of money on and what was the game changer? For me, it was this bag, which I still have. And this is from, I think it's an Australian brand, but it's from Mimco. Um, and this cost me $350 back then. And that was a lot of money to me. And yeah, so I don't remember the name of the bag, but I used to love this a lot. It's a big statement piece as well and it's really comfortable to hold um but yeah that was it and there is a bit of a story behind it because it was kind of like an impulse buy as well so i'm going to tell you because i do like to get sidetracked and all but yeah so basically you know until i was about 21 between 21 and 23 like i never really looked into designer bags for me it was like you know louis vuitton gucci prada whoa it's like a lot of money don't even go there so for me like anything over fifty dollars was like that's expensive so that was just me um shopping growing up i guess but i think i don't know why like i started paying attention to designer bags when i was like between 21 and 23 and i knew like i could definitely not afford it because it would have cost hundreds like thousands but i came across a website that did now i know this is going to offend people sorry but it's a lesson learned so I came across a website that did replica designer bags um, and they were still quite expensive because they even, it was a name that was a replica but the quality of it is like any other, it was still, you know, leather, whatever the um, material was. So I came across this website and at that time like Hilary Dove had this like the Speedy 30 bag, Louis Vuitton Speedy 30 and a couple of other people had it so I thought, you know, that would be really nice. So I ended up purchasing one through that website for $206, which back then was, that was the most expensive thing I ever bought before I got this bag. So I purchased it and it arrived and it was really pretty and the quality was really good, but it was a replica bag and to me, I don't know, I just felt really guilty holding onto it. Like, I don't know if other people would have noticed, but I know, know that it's fake. So I just had a really hard time, like, carrying it. So I thought, you know what, I can't do this. So I'm like, I'm going to have to get the real one and save up for it. Now, when I checked the website, but I think back then there wasn't, like, Australia version or the, there wasn't, like, show, it wasn't showing Australian prices. So I compared it with the US prices and after like conversion and exchange, it would have cost around $700. So that was my thought. So by Christmas one year, I was ready. I was like, yep, I'm going to go in and get a legit authentic um, Speedy 30 bag. And I walked in and already I felt like the sales assistant was judging me because I was like, you know, looking around and she was like, can I help you? And I was like, yeah, I'm looking at this Speedy bag. How much is it? And she was like, it's $900 or something around there. And I was like, what? Like, I think it wasn't more the price, the cost of it. Like, if I knew it was 900 then, you know, I'll be fine. It was more, I was kind of, like, shocked and disappointed because I was like, what? Like, it would have been, like, seven. I don't understand how it jumped from 700 to 900 just like that. And it couldn't be, like, the exchange rate because that's just, like, a big difference. And, yeah, I was just like, okay, so, well, that's just, I didn't see the ethics behind it. I'm like, how can they just do that? So I ended up leaving the store feeling really disappointed, but you know, I had money that I wanted to spend. So I ended up um, purchasing this bag from Mimco. So like I said, it was kind of a per like an impulse purchase, but I did really love it at the start and I did use it all the time. Um, yeah, that was my first experience, I guess, with designer. So question two is, what do you consider your best investment? And my best investment will have to be um, this bag. And this is the Chanel 2.55. This is the medium um, classic bag, I guess. And this is in caviar and gold detailing. I consider this my first child. This is my baby. Um, and I love it. It was, this was definitely the most expensive bag I've ever purchased. I got this in like 2010. 
And there is also a story because there's a story behind most of my bags. But yeah, this one. So my girlfriends were organizing a trip to Europe. And they're like, you know, Gina, do you want to come? And I'm, I'm not really a traveler. I wasn't, re I didn't really have a travel bag. But I thought, you know what? It would be a good time to buy a Chanel bag because you know you buy it in Europe because it's European, it's French, and you know I can make a holiday. And plus, you get the tax back as well. So I ended up going to Europe, and this was the whole purpose of the trip was to buy this bag. And I really wanted to get it in France, but I was looking at this one in particular with the gold hardware, which I didn't have. So I ended up getting this in Florence. Um, but yeah, this is um, my best investment because, you know, as you know, it's a Chanel. Chanel do not lose their values. If anything, they actually gain, um, like they cost a lot more for a vintage piece and they always hold it. You never lose money in Chanel. So this will definitely be my best investment piece. And it's something that I don't intend to sell. Um, I would, if I have kids, like if I have a daughter, um, I would, it's not something that I want to pass on, but if I don't have kids, then I've always told Kyung that, you know, if I die, um, make sure you cremate me and put my ashes in here. But yeah, this is my favourite. So question three is, what is your criteria when looking to buy a piece? Um, I'm a bit of an impulse buyer, so I buy things because I like it. Um, but when it comes to designer pieces, because it's more that you're spending a lot of money on it, that you want to make sure that it's worth it. So if I see something that I like, I kind of just sit on it for a while until, you know, I'm definitely sure that I like it. And I do do a lot of research because, you know, you don't want to put your, you don't want to waste your money as well. So what I look for is I look for the quality, um, versatility as well as how practical it is as well and the whole design of it making sure that it's worth every penny so yeah that's what i look for um question four is what has been your stupidest most regrettable purchase um i wouldn't say it is a lot of money like i said i all these stuff i purchased with my own money that i've saved up on you know i don't i'm not super rich or anything i don't you know People don't buy me stuff, I guess, and all this is out of my pocket. So I don't think that any of my purchases are really that stupid or regrettable. Um, I have obviously made some impulse buys, um, one of which would have to be um, my Louis Vuitton Eva bag, which looks like this. I think my biggest problem is that if a bag is within its hundreds, I think, you know, ooh, I can afford that. So this was kind of like an impulse buy for me. Like, I don't know why, but I mean, I think it's pretty and I think it's really nice. And I think it's versatile because, you know, it comes with a long strap. You can wear it different ways as a clutch or, you know, handbag as well as a cross shoulder bag. But I don't really use it as enough. And I did kind of didn't really research it before I bought it. So I want to say it's stupid or regrettable, but... A lot of bags were under um, impulse buys and, you know, I still love it either way, so. Question five. If you have sold any of your luxury goods, have you ever had seller's regret? Um, no, I haven't sold any of my luxury goods. I am a bit of a hoarder. Um, I just can't put my hard into selling my stuff i do i always say i do intend to because you know i don't use it there's no point you know taking up storage and cluttering the house so i do intend to start selling but i've never really gotten around to it um i was actually thinking of selling my mimco bag a while ago and i took a picture like a couple of years ago which i still haven't gotten around so i don't know if i ever will but if i do then i don't think i'll have regrets because i if i don't use it i don't use it anyway Question six, what is a piece that you think everyone needs and should have? I don't have one yet, but I think everyone needs a timeless watch. And I'm not talking about like, you know, Michael Kors or Marc Jacobs, like all those like fashionable watches, like the timeless ones, like Cartier, um, Rolex, even Amiga and like a Patek Philippe. Um, all those good brand watches because you know when you hear stories how like you know oh I got this watch from my grandma my great grandma it's like passed on generations like a heirloom and I think they hold just a lot of meaning and you know memories behind it and everyone needs to tell the time anyway so I think it's good to have like invest in a really good Swiss or like a Japanese watch um, one has got all these intricate details inside it to make it work um, but yeah I think 
that is something that everyone and like you know it doesn't matter who like a boy or girl anyone could have something like that question seven what is a piece that you think is overhyped um i don't know i don't really have one in like particular but i think in general seasonal pieces like i don't I don't look at seasonal pieces, especially like different colours or stuff like that, because a lot of times, you know, you may not be interested in that colour anymore. I think it's best to go with classical pieces that will last a lifetime. Um, I think, I don't know, I think when it comes to brands, I think I have a lot of like Tiffany bracelets, like the silver pieces, and I think they are overhyped because if you think about it, the price you pay, you're not paying for the actual jewelry, you're paying for the brand because at the end of the day, they're still silver. And I bought like for my wedding, I bought like a pearl necklace from there, which wasn't like the top of the range, but it was like the next collection, which cost like thousands. But you know, if I purchased at another st store, minus the brand name um, for the same quality of it it's a lot cheaper so i think tiffany's is a bit of a hype um any bags like any brands that you know produce a lot of replicas and fake versions then they tend to um hype it up a lot and it kind of loses its like mean like the worth of it as well Next question eight, which is the last question, what is next on your wish list? Well, what is not on my wish list? I think it's one of those things that are forever growing, especially when I'm bored. I just tend to like, you know, look at it online. But I think that what's top on my list that I've been looking at for years is probably the Givenchy Antigona. I'm still deciding on whether to get the small or the mini. Um, and also the Celine tote bag in micro. Um, those have been on my list for so long and I was considering either those or the Prada um, Safiana tote bag and I ended up getting that one when I was in Hawaii which I don't regret it but I think I should have gotten one of the other ones but anyways so there at the top I also would love like obviously a timeless Rolex watch Rolex or like a um was it Patek Philippe um they're really nice and also some vintage Chanel and Louis Vuitton bags I think they're really nice as well um, I'm not really into jewelry because I don't exactly have my ears pierced or anything so jewelry wise I don't have anything but it's more bags 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 and shoes I'm not really that I don't look after my shoes enough to appreciate it so I don't think it's worth me buying shoes so that's it that is all the tag questions I hope you like this video if you do please give me a thumbs up and also let me know if there's any other tag videos that um, I could do because I think they're really fun and also if you've got a Lux tag video make sure you link me below so I can check them out as well um, but yeah make sure you subscribe to watch more videos and thanks for watching bye